33 minutes past the hour. It is the uh, Jeff Santo show that you are tuned into. We are here every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 Eastern time, 12 to 3 Pacific time. Uh, folks, uh, one of our first guests uh, this Friday edition of the program was live in Seattle. She is a, a great teacher uh, on strike from the uh, Seattle Education Association, the great uh affiliate of the NEA, the National Education Association. And we're going to end our show live in Seattle. It's 2.06 in the house today on the Jeff Santos Show. Because it's now time to go to our good friend. He ends up, you know, the last segment of the week. And we saved the best for last. Our good friend Mark Taylor can feel the renaissance main of the Jeff Santos Show. He is uh, trying to get his um, video components <laughs> taken care of. I mean, Mark is awesome because, you know, he has a guitar ready to rock and roll. He's got all, all these different uh, instruments running around in his, uh, in his studio there. And at the same time, we're trying to hook up the video and the audio and all that. Uh, but anyways, he is the Renaissance man of the Jeff Santo Show. He is the executive director of Democracy Watch News. He's also, of course, a uh, fantastic activist, and he is a musician. Uh, you can't beat that. That's why he's the Renaissance man. And I believe we have him. There he is, live in color. And uh, you got the red background, too, man. You're looking uh, looking pretty sharp, Mr. Mark Taylor Canfield. How are you? Well, I guess I have to turn my amp up so you can hear me. <laughs> Jimmy, eat your heart out. I know that's um, loud. My name. Sorry for the people in the next room. Hey, how you doing, Jeff? I always doing, look Mark? forward to doing your show, Jeff. It's so much fun. I always look forward during the week to this end of the week talk with you where we can kind of uh, relax a little bit and talk about the topics of the day. But I, I do have to give a shout out to Democracy Watch News. I wanted yes, to let everybody please. know we are um, doing weekly Twitter Spaces uh, events, uh, largely with uh, correspondents from Africa and South America right now. So some foreign oh, correspondents. Wow. Uh, those are being turned into podcasts, which are mm -hmm. then posted at Spotify and iTunes and all the rest of them. Mm -hmm. It's called Democracy Cast. You can also get it for free at Libsyn. And our latest podcast is about the presidential election in Colombia, where for the first time they elected a left wing president. So it's quite big news down there, even though you're not really going to hear much of it from American corporate media. No, you don't but, do that. Yeah. Not, not around. <laughs> I mean, you don't even get news on the left wing here in America on major uh, uh, outlets. Um, that's really sad. It's only going to get worse with our friends at CNN uh, well, being bought CPAC from the loans. Yeah, CPAC is always attacking the so-called, you know, leftist radical communists in this country. And I keep looking for them, Jeff, but I'm just not seeing them anywhere. You know so. Look under your desk or someplace. And then they know. I don't know. Uh, yeah. It's, it's really good. sad, man, uh, where we're at and uh, so forth. But, hey, you know, we spoke earlier, and I hope you had a chance to listen in a little bit of it with Yolanda yeah. Jones of the Seattle Education Association. And, uh, and not very far, two or three miles but they were talking about uh, Garfield High School. Is is that, uh, or Garfield Elementary School, is that one of the, the places not far from you? Yes, Garfield is very famous uh, for having amazing musicians like Quincy Jones, oh. who went there. Wow. Yeah, so uh, it's it's a very famous uh, high school between- Is it very uh, music oriented? Well, Roosevelt High School and Garfield have amazing music programs. So their jazz ensembles are world famous. So wow. yeah, that's why I know about it. Um, there's also a lot of student activism that goes on there. And I believe that uh, when our former county commissioner, Larry Gossett, good friend of mine, was uh, a student activist and having sit-ins during the 60s and 70s to try to get some buildings for his community there, uh, he was working at a Garfield High School. So it's also got a a long history of activism and yeah the, the teachers are out the picket lines are there so uh, people are joining those picket lines uh they are getting support of course from our uh democratic socialist city council member shama sawant who's been putting right. out uh, alerts uh, telling people to join the picket fantastic. lines and to support the teachers so uh solidarity with all of the teachers out there yes uh, yes talk about solidarity uh, I don't know if you can see this. in our culture Right. Yes, no, I you mean, know, look, 
solidarity for solidarity forever, man. And you know, yeah. um, this is this is where we need to kind of come together. Um, you know, it's it's uh, as Larry Cohen was on uh, after um, Yolanda and uh, uh, Doctor Shelton, Professor Shelton. You know, you had a you had a situation where, well, you know. Um, their Dem Democratic National Committee is continuing to allow dark money uh, into uh, into the party and crippling, you know, great progressives like Jessica Cisneros and the awful Cuellar, who won that uh, by less than 500 votes. And then, of course, you had Andy Levin, whose family has done a heck of a lot from Michigan, Carl Levin, the senator, and his father, Sandra Levin, the congressman, and they and they trash him. And, of course, we all know about Nina Turner. So... You know, I, I just it's it's just hard to believe. But at the same time, you know, if if you don't allow and don't push for the Democrats, you end up with a fascist group of people in the Republican Party. So this is our dilemma. As Larry Cohen was saying, you got to be on two tracks. You're going to make the Democratic Party better, but at the same time, keep the fascists out the Republican Party. It Unfortunately, that's where we are. Yeah. And just to go back to the teachers for a second, I should let people know that um they are in bargaining contract negotiations right now. Uh, there are 50,000 students that are affected. The mm. city of Seattle, which has done this in the past, you know, because it does seem like this is a, a tradition now, every time the contract comes up, uh, there's a strike. And uh, the city provides uh, what they call event uh, facilities for uh, the kids so that they have a place to go because the parents, a lot of them are working. So that creates a child care problem. So the city is registering kids right now so that they can go to community centers around the city uh, during school hours and uh, partake in, you know, all sorts of activities that are going to be uh, guided by the city. So that's a good thing. That's one sign that Seattle steps up, you know, to to support the community in times like this. Uh, the negotiations today started at 9 a.m. And if they aren't done by the end of the day, they're going to go through the weekends. The teachers want what they call student support. Uh, their main three uh, demands are st uh, student support, reasonable, um, well, it would be re reasonable um, salaries and adequate working conditions. So right. they have problems with uh, too large of classrooms and the inability right. to hire well, That's been a big a issue nationwide, but it, it's it's case in Seattle too. Let me ask you, because you don't have the hot weather, of course, uh, that's a... Um, Eastern Washington has, um, but, um, you know, and, and other parts of the country. But, you know, it, it would seem to me that, you know, I don't know if it's anything like it is here on the East Coast. A lot of the schools were built during FDR's time period. I'm wondering, you know, how many, how many schools there have no air condition or no um, heat or the heat is, you know, sometimes it's on, sometimes it's not. Again, it's not as cold you know, again, as Boston is or New York and the wintertime is Seattle. But, you know, you also have, you know, a lot of rain uh, that could, you know, obviously deteriorate some of the, uh, you know, the wood and so on and so forth. What are the conditions like physically of some of the school buildings there in Seattle? Well, a lot of them were built by the Franklin Roosevelt administration. Yeah, yeah exactly. That time. Okay. And they haven't been rebuilt yet. Yeah, I mean, the high school, one of the high schools I went to was definitely uh, built during FDR's time. Those old brick buildings, you know, that were actually at the time were very famous for their architecture. But I, right. you know, I've seen things, uh, we've talked about this before. In Washington State, our own Supreme Court held our state legislature in contempt because they re were, um, the Supreme Court ruled that our state legislature was not adequately funding K through 12 public education as per the requirements of our state constitution. So we have a levy system here. Uh, people vote on raising their property taxes in order to fund the schools. It's not a good way to fund your schools. Um, in uh, economically depressed communities, sometimes those levies fail, so the repairs aren't done, and there is no recourse really. It's just you, you know if the if the local district voters do not approve the levy, there is no increase in funding for public education. So that has been a problem in the past. There was one famous story where uh, a student's father in West Seattle actually donated a bunch of money to the school, dis school district so they could buy new textbooks. So that's wow. pretty sad when it comes to, you know. That is sad, um, but that's the reality to today. 
How many, yeah, how many so that's teachers throughout the nation are taking money out of their purses and their wallets to, to, to you know, to give, to have uh, all the students have the right textbook and, and um, you know, and all the I other know. equipment they need. It's ridiculous. By the way, Jeff, it's true. Yes. Some of the most influential people in my life uh, were my teachers and whether it was college of course, or me too. high school. Oscar Sisk, well, I, he's still out there. I'm sure he's going to be watching this video. Uh, he is uh, an amazing teacher who is also assistant uh, school principal at my high school. Um, Julie Jacoby, uh, Deb Kyle, uh, uh, Charles Hoxie. These are all very inspirational teachers who spent their lives devoted to young people and you know mentoring folks. And so I am a product of a lot of these teachers. I, I you know as a young teenager. They really shaped my point of view in the world and helped me to really love education too and, and learning and make it a, a, a pleasant and uh, valuable thing in our lives. So teachers are, the, are some of the most important people in our culture. They should be some of the well, highest the paid. the most important profession well. in America along with nurses, hands down. And there's no, I don't think they're even close. Basically, one protects you and, and, and keeps you healthy, nurses, and the other one is the, is the future. If you can't educate the population, you know, 1% gets educated and everybody else, you know, is, is incapable of competing on a world level. So there you go. So and, it's, it's exactly the case. And in Washington state, if you're going to fund the schools by levies, then, uh, yeah, people who I wanted own to ask that to actually Yolanda today. So it, it's not by property taxes. It's by levies. No, it's the levy is a local vote in the school district to raise the property taxes in order to increase funding. So basically, the, the major source of funding for public schools in Washington state is property taxes, but people have to vote according to the way that the system is set up. Uh, people have to vote to approve those levies. So if the levies fail, there's just no money. That, that's just the way it is. People suffer. And so there have been cases where levies have failed. And the problem is, is that uh, more uh, wealthy communities obviously have better schools because they have more right, access right. to funding from the property taxes and then poorer communities have you know a less adequate schools so there you go it's a also an economic and racial inequality uh it, it, situation a lot of time when you use levies to raise the money we need a dedicated uh funding source and the washington state legislature and even our own governor have failed to come up with an adequate way of funding public education it's really sad jeff someday that yeah, has really to happen is. Yeah. They have. They have to. They have to figure out a better way. And it's too progressive a city, particularly in Seattle, but the state itself as well, uh, not to do that. It's ridiculous. Um, hey, let me ask you, I want to talk to you about Pearl Jam in a second here. We didn't get much into the Biden thing, but um, running out of time. Who is that behind you? You know, at first thought, I thought it was Bowie, but it looks like a woman, yes, actually. No, that's actually David Bowie. It, it is Bowie. Okay. There's a guitar in right. front of him. It's the cover for his album Low that he did with Brian Eno. So that's a oh, picture okay. of him when they were hanging out in Berlin together. And oh, uh, wow. so, yeah, he's looking very dapper. That's kind of before the thin white Duke period. But he yeah, he had that hairstyle. And I just love uh, that poster. It's bigger than life size. If you know, we're we're quite a ways away from it. If you were if we were up to it, close to it, you would see how big it is. But you know, it helps inspire me. I think it's good to have in your studio. No, uh, a few icons to inspire you and remind you well, I mean, of why you're I don't there know how much you can see it but you know you two is behind me here um, yes you know again i don't know how much you can see it right right next to the statue of liberty and my good friend bernie sanders uh so i agree with you man that's fantastic um well you know you can't beat that um well just quickly before we before we go into some of the musicians in particular what pearl jam is doing um, what do you feel of the speech that was given? Again, I, th I felt that it was needed speech, but I wouldn't have done it on Labor Day weekend. Okay. We, the Democracy Watch News, you know, we obviously had to discuss this during our press briefing. And I, I, you know, and I even told a friend the other day who asked me about it, I said, you know, whenever you live in a country where uh, the Reporters Without Borders ranks you 42nd in the world in terms of press freedom, I think any talk of democracy is a good idea. And so yeah, I agree. Uh, the bar, I just unfortunately, the bar, myself. yes, the, unfortunately, the bar may have been set very low, but to, um, to hear a president of the United States actually even mention the word democracy and not just in a platitude, but actually as something that is under threat, I think is an improvement. Um, I, yep, yeah, I do one. wonder about its timing, 
but at the same time, uh, I'm used to as a journalist, you know, having people drop things on you on a Friday afternoon or whatever, because, you know, it, they kind of want to bury it. I don't think that happened with this. I think it's just that uh, a lot of people are are skeptical of Joe Biden because he does sort of represent that neoliberalism legacy yeah. from the Clinton administration that, let's face it, you know, kind of sold the middle class out and caused a lot of the problems that we're dealing with today. So it's great that he's no talking doubt. about democracy. It was great that he held a democracy summit, even though the United States was actually, you know, doing some undemocratic things at the time. Um, and, you know, I think anytime as executive director for Democracy Washington, anytime people talk about democracy and, and especially a, a leader of a country, it's an improvement. Whether it's actually going to make a difference or not, I don't know. I think people do need to pay very close attention to this pseudo fascist movement in the United States right now because it is a direct threat to democracy. These people, including Trump, who seems to be their leader, doesn't, they really don't care uh, about dem democracy or fair elections. They will lie, they will cheat, they will steal, they will do whatever they can to take power. Not that much different. And you mentioned, you know, Berlin. At, at one point in, in Germany's history and also M Mussolini, uh, those people yeah. just marched, you know, on the Capitol and took power. They were not interested in democratic power. They're interested in bullying people. And we have to be very careful that we don't allow those people to take over again and get another president like Donald Trump. It could be a disaster for this country. Now, I was just looking around. I have a, the famous uh, East Benign Berliner um, photo of that speech that when Kennedy went to uh, to Berlin, um, you know, uh, we could use that again, that, uh, that thought process And Berlin is, uh, I would love to go back to, I was there. I went to checkpoint Charlie, actually, it's a story. Uh, we'll have to talk about some day off air and maybe on air too sometime. Um, Hey, I wanted to bring out, um, Washington education association, of course, is the umbrella, uh, for the Seattle education association. If you want to go there, folks, it's uh, Seattle, W E A dot org. If you want to help whatever, uh, that you can go do that. Hey, I'm really interested in other Seattle based band again, you know, leading the country, leading the world, uh, Pearl Jam, uh, doing more, uh, on a number of issues. Uh, talk to me about that. I'm, I'm so excited that, uh, Eddie Vedder is getting involved. You know, I, I heard the other day, I don't know if you, you, you saw this, but Larry Cohen was mentioning, you know, uh, presidential candidates in 2024, you know, who his top pick was Bruce Springsteen. Um, so, you know, we've been thinking about wow. this, you and I, um, about this, and this is a guy who's a union guy. He's not a, not a star dude. Um, you know, but he grew up in Philly and he knew Springsteen, you know, 15, 20 years ago and, you know, thought that, you know, somebody who understands it and can actually articulate a message. And again, you know, if you think of, of all the presidential campaigns, uh, you know, I think going back to at least 2000. Al Gore had Springsteen, John Kerry in 04 had Springsteen, uh, Obama had him in 2008 and 12, and um, uh, in 2016, Hillary had him, which was kind of a weird thing because he was trying to get out the African-American vote in Center City, Philadelphia, so it wasn't exactly you know the best, but he could have been in a lot of other places. But anyways, that being said, um, you know, you can't beat someone like him. And I think, you know, the next best thing to Bruce is Eddie. Well, that's interesting because I appreciate both of their vocal styles. They both have very uh, empathetic and, and yes. powerful, passionate voices. Uh, you, you know, Bono as well. I think these, both right. of the, all three of these vocalists are amazingly if, uh, evocative when they sing. It's incredible. The, the, the passion that comes out. And by the way, if you haven't heard, folks, Nebraska by Bruce Springsteen, it's a solo album that he did on like a four track or something. It's it's almost like a demo, but it's really raw. It's just him basically in an acoustic guitar and it's some of the best mm. stuff he's done. And you have the same oh, thing, you know, with Eddie Vedder and his ukulele, who, you know, who, Eddie actually won a <laughs> Grammy for his ukulele. I, I'm not playing a ukulele, by the way, today, Jeff. I'm playing a, a 60s style guitar, which I haven't shown the crowd before. I haven't shown the audience before, oh, wow. but this is one of my mm, beautiful uh, vintage guitars. Hey, uh, I love the idea of somebody like Bruce Springsteen running for office. I think it would get a lot of young people enthused, yeah. enthused interested in the election. Um, I, I appreciate 
that idea and I will consider it more. You know, at first, when we first started, started talking about it, I thought, well, this is kind of a pie in the sky idea. But then again, um, these days in politics, I mean, anything goes in a sense. If you can get a reality TV star. Yeah, as I was going to say, I mean, Trump, you know, opened the Why door. Not? You know, I mean, you know, now anybody in their in their brother that has a famous name. I even heard Stephen A. Smith talking today. <laughs> you know, on ESPN's first take that he would be interested. I mean, I don't think it was serious, but still. So yeah, I mean, you know, he's opened the door for, as they say, for any Tom, Dick, or Harry to to run. Um, but uh, but Springsteen and, and Eddie Vedder to me at the top. I mean, if Bono was an American citizen, I'd put him right up there too. Um, but, um, you know, if you want to come Pearl to Jam America, but you can't run anyways, Bono. So just stay in Ireland. Uh, yeah. What, what did you say? Yeah, Pramila Jayapal, you know, unfortunately. Can't yeah, run. exactly. It's another, you know. Shama Sawan, our city council. You know, they're all, all right, born in foreign countries. So unless yeah. we change the constitution, they're not going to be able to do that. I wanted to mention that Pearl Jam is actually a part of a group of musicians who are starting to bring back this idea of cutting down the carbon footprint on their on their tours, because if you think about yes. all the semis and the fuel and the energy that goes into those concerts, especially in the major stadiums, uh, it's it's something that I've thought a lot about as a musician and have been, you know, really doing some in-depth research about. And I remember there was a time when Radiohead was talking about this as well, and they made some wow. uh, commitments to reduce their carbon footprint. But I haven't heard it from bands recently. Of course, the bands weren't even touring for a couple of years there. So it's nice to see that Pearl Jam is out in that crowd of musicians and you know we can talk about that at a future time when we have more time but it's a good uh place for musicians to go to support this idea of cutting down the carbon footprint on their tours because i mean i, I was thinking about emerson lake and palmer they toured back in the 70s i think with a 150 piece orchestra can you imagine wow. how much oh my energy God. It took? i well, think, they think about the buses back. that you would need for that you know just you know the back then the gas polluting buses now there are some hydrogen buses that are out there you know, I mean, that would be another avenue, uh, you know, electric vehicles. You know, you could do a lot of different things there. And, you know, it's interesting. I don't, I don't know if you caught any of this on the Queen coverage, but um, both Harry and William actually drove from London up to uh, Scotland uh, several hours. And, you know, I'm wondering, you know, are, are you doing the right thing by the environment? Uh, you, you know, as an electric car, I had no idea. I didn't uh, have a chance to find out. But it's interesting if you're going to drive you know, multiple hours, uh, you know, can you do it in an electric car? And, uh, you know, do, I don't know if the UK is set up like Biden wants it to be with all the different uh, electric charging sites, but, you know, that's just something. But they didn't fly, and that was, you know, mm -hmm. that was actually a good thing in some some ways if you look at how much energy you do when you actually have to uh, lift off from, a, from an airport. I think that carbon, uh, the combustion engine is uh, seeing its last days. I really don't think it's, it's uh, economically or environmentally viable at, at, a, at a certain point. So we'll see more and more electricity. California is going to go to all electric cars. I see Washington State doing the same thing soon. Thanks, That's everybody. Good. It was great to see you. Hey, Check go out Mariners, go. I'm rooting for you guys. All the best, MTC. Yeah, Check them out Astros. on YouTube. Yeah, Check hey, out you too, YouTube. man. Hey, I want to thank uh, Freddie Santori, Joshua Martin, producing this broadcast. Just tell you, folks, keep on fighting peacefully. My name is Jeff Santos. Right now, it's my time to say I... Gotta go!